Welcome to Ask Dr. Barkin, brought to you live every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Ask Dr. Barkin is a free service of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation. To ask your question about prostate cancer or any men's health issue, please press number 9 on your touchtone phone. And now, here's Dr. Israel Barkin. Hello, Dr. Barkin. Hello, hello, Dr. Dugban. It's so nice to hear your voice. Uh, I want to tell all our listeners that we are very fortunate. We are going to have Dr. Dugban giving us a lecture on our Dr. Barkin call-in show. And at the same time, we are viewing a PowerPoint presentation. So, Dr. Dugban, um, carry on. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Barkin, for inviting me back. It is my pleasure. Uh, this You're welcome. This afternoon, uh, my uh, topic of this uh, lecture would be power Doppler transrectal ultrasound for prostate cancer detection, characterization, staging biopsy, and future development. Next uh, slide, uh, slide show that the, then why we got to know the seminal vesicle invasion or not prior to any treatment, including the radical prostatectomy. I'm going to show you two papers, summary of two papers, one from uh, John Sapkins, uh, that is that the five-year PSA progression free rate, if someone has a seminal vesicle invasion, it is only 36% success based on PSA. And, but without seminal vesicle, the number goes up to 70 other paper coming, uh, came from a Memorial Sloan Kettering. They looked at the PSA level 10 years after. If the uh, seminal vesicular invasion was proven during the surgery, the uh, PSA progression free rate was only 33%. That means you got one out of three chance of success, two out of three chance of failure with the radical prostatectomy. That's what you got to know all this information before you make up your decision as to the treatment. This uh, picture clearly shows that the uh, large volume cancer here and then direct extension towards the rectal wall. We call it T4 stage already. And the glycine grade was 9. Surprisingly, he was scheduled for radical surgery, but of course he is not a candidate, none whatsoever, because his rectum was already invaded by the prostate cancer. So uh, we saved his radical surgery in this uh, situation. Another problematic area in the prostate to have a cancer is apex. That means distal tip junction with the penile prostate, uh, penile urethra. Over there, that prostate capsule, the wall, is uh, maybe very thin or even absent. So cancer can extend outside very early on and then inferior neurovascular bundles are close by. Most importantly, external sphincter is close by. So but because of the reason, if you have, a, should you have a radical surgery, there is a high positive surgical margin weight. So if treatment is aggressive, either cryosurgery, radiation, whatever, the external sphincter, which is nearby, could be injured in the case you may end up with a urinary incontinence. That's what we got to know where the cancer is, apex or not. This diagram is a, a pretty uh, interesting one. This is apex portion of the prostate. Urethra runs, runs there, become penile urethra. ES means external sphincter. You got a neurovascular bundle comes in. I have a fortunate enough to have an autopsy specimen with a similar to this diagram, showing that the urethra right there all matches with the other, other diagram. Cancer is right here. External sphincter is right here. And we found out that he has a large volume cancer, just like this diagram, uh, with the magnified uh, uh, view of the, this pathology, sli pathology slide confirmed that he got a cancer already outside of the capsule because of the uh, capsule here is very thin or sometimes absent. So cancer is already outside of the prostate. In this scenario, if we have a radical surgery, even though it, it was a good surgery, he might have a positive surgical margin. That could be an eventual 
treatment failure. And uh, this uh, good example, 52-year-old young man, Gleason grade 6, diagnosis, diagnosed in November 2002 with a PSA 9. And he came to me about uh, three or four months later. So ultrasound was done. I found out that at, at the apex, we got a large volume tumor at the apex and even crossing the midline. So I told him that it is too large to be comfort for a radical surgery, but obviously he went out and then had a uh, surgery done. So surgery was done in June, and the margin was positive as expected. The lowest PAC level after surgery was down to 1.0. It's a totally unacceptable number. So I did not know that what happened, but December 3, uh, 2003, he came to me, said that I got a radical surgery, PAC is now 1.8. So I uh, did a repeat ultrasound, showed that the dark spot is totally abnormal findings after radical surgery. So I have to re-biopsy it, confirm that he got a glycine 6 cancer, remaining cancer in the prostate. So now he has a problem. He might need radiation, on and on and on. That's why we want to know, where is your cancer? You, I got the cancer right. I got the cancer left. That's not enough for me. And we want to know where in the right lobe, where in the left lobe you have a cancer, and how big it is, how close it is to the, any, all the important organs, and also uh, whether or not cancer is extending out of a capsule or not. It's a very, very important. It is the uh, next case is rather older man, recent case, uh, came to me uh, with known glycine 7 cancer, T2B stage, that means his cancer is all still within the confinement. And he was scheduled for robotic surgery something like a next week Monday. We didn't have much time. So I looked at the p uh, ultrasound on the right side, middle level, large volume, dark spot, which is a cancer, lots of feeding vessels, feeding the prostate cancer here at the middle level, extending down to the apex, so getting uh, more serious. But most importantly, further down there, this ring-shaped dark spot is an image of external sphincter. As you see, the cancer is abutting, extending down towards the level of the external sphincter and abutting the, this organ. So I have to take a biopsy, including the uh, external sphincter. We proved that it is indeed now glycine 8 cancer involving the external sphincter in, uh, already. It is now T4 stage. So his robotic surgery was avoided. The next slide shows that the uh, significance of having transition zone tumor. Transition zone tumor comprises of about 20% of tumor, so relatively rare compared to the peripheral zone tumor, but has a different biological behavior. It takes more benign course compared to peripheral zone tumor. It may escape an early detection with a random biopsy because it is too far away from the rectum. And often detected when it is, it is a large volume tumor with a high PSA. But still, even though it's a large volume, usually contained within the prostate. And uh, 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 this cancer is usually a good candidate for an active surveillance if the cancer volume is small with a low glisten grade. This is a good example. Next slide is it's a MD, 68-year-old man. PSA was up to eight. It was four to five ranges for a long time. So because of that reason, he had a 12-core biopsy, random biopsy that was all negative. But because of the, his PSA was up, he was not comfortable with this uh, information. He came to me. We performed the color Doppler ultrasound. As you see that the black and white, really, I, should, I did not detect anything abnormality right away. But take a look at the color Doppler. There is a small area of definitely increased blood flow within the transition zone. There's a, there's a border dividing peripheral zone here and the transition zone here. Small volume, glycine 6, 68-year-old man, so he's been on active surveillance since then, and he's been doing fine.